man. Ah, oh, listen. I can't do a regular afterthoughts this week. Today, we're gonna have to go and do this a bit differently than what we normally do. For this unique installment of the Afterthoughts for chapter 1004, I am going to have to consult my Pokedex here, which to you, if your brain isn't as massive as the people who gave me this list of names I'm about to read to you, it may seem like a mere notebook with a few spots. But let me tell you something. This is clearly a Pokedex. And what we're going to be looking through today is a list of names given to me by the comments section and by my own brain that are going to list 11 different possibilities for who that silhouette can be. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be playing Who is that? One Piece Silhouette. Lady Toki. Now, Lady Toki, being the silhouette, would not only be extremely fascinating for what would take place here within the, the, the end of Act 3, but it would also be very fascinating for where things could go in post Wano, you know, giving us certain different pieces of information when it comes to the Void Century, to the Kozuki clan, and we could come out of Wano having so much more information if this silhouette is truly her. So I'm down with it being Lady Toki. The next candidate is Hiori. Now, if Hiori is here, I need a moment where Zoro puts their bandana on her head on some Luffy to Nami stuff. If that doesn't happen, keep her in the flower capital. But it definitely makes sense from a storytelling standpoint with her connection to the rest of the scabbards, Momonosuke. I'll take it. If it's Hiori, I'll take it. Now, Conjuro. Who wrote this? Who really sat down on their phone or on their computer, knowing the emotional impact this would have on the story, and willingly wrote Contra? You just want to see us suffer, don't you? Contra. My emotions won't be able to handle if it's Contra. Orochi's other form as a separate head. Now, I will 110% take this one solely for the fact that the voice actor would deliver such an incredible performance as he's laying there in front of the nine scabbard's bodies, finally seeing these ghosts that have tormented him for so many years. Do you understand how legendary that would be in the anime? I would take it being Orochi, man, 110%. Caribou. 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 He still is the only one with the information about Shira Hoshi being Poseidon. Dude, can you imagine if it's actually Caribou? Nico Robin, a.k.a. You ready for it? Miss Old Sunday. Ah, 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 ah. Now, Robin being the master of espionage that she is, would not allow herself to be seen by this type of camera unless it was for a reason. So if it really is her, then we're about to see some sort of trap or something take place to where Robin, like, traps him in the room and or forces Black Maria out of the thing so that now she can confront Black Maria face to face and ready to go up and like swim more. That'd be the only way that I'd take that because Robin would never allow herself to be captured that way. Are you kidding me? That's Nico Robin, man. Anytime you enter a room, she immediately glances all around. It's like, yo, camera over there, camera over here, dark humor over here, dark humor. Like, yo, that's Robin. Espionage greatness. Vivi. Vivi. How would that even make any sense? 
Unless Kuma, up there in the reverie, hit her with that wagaba and sent her flying instead of Sabo. And Sabo was blamed for her disappearance and or disintegrated her on site with a fire fist. And because she was never, her body was never found, she immediately was broadcasted that she was turned into ash. And therefore, that's maybe, that might be the thing that actually took place in Alabasta, which would mean. Don't play with me, man. Don't play with me. Sabo. Listen to me. If Sabo's not one of the cipher poll agents under that mask, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. My boy Sabo here? Only because Shima's already legendary. If Sabo shows up and he cans his way into the... Basile Hawkins. Now, if it's Hawkins, I'll take it. We all need a little more Yu-Gi-Oh in our lives. You know what I mean? Like, I think every single person need some more Yu-Gi-Oh in their lives. So Hawkins, baby, if it's you, let's go. Let's go because that would indicate that you are officially turning over to our side, that Law has been orchestrating this entire thing, X, Drake, I mean, the supernovas would be gathering, Stampede style. Hawkins, bring on the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Let's go. Let's go, man. A white beard or Roger Pirate. Now, if this were to be the case, I fear for the Conqueror's hockey energy that is going to be emanating from those pages on a weekly basis. Because if it truly is a remnant from that part of the story we are in for not only legendary flashbacks, but for incredible scenes of hockey. Shit.